Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we rewatch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. And I'm Helena. And for this Halloween bonus episode, we are joined by Matt. Hello, it's me, Matt from the internet. And I've brought another Scooby-Doo movie. It is Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, <laughs> You've got to do a Halloween show. But this one had a sad, this one had a sad Scooby-Doo theme tune. Yeah, because they captured everything. Because they solved all of the mysteries. Yeah. They solved all they of the They caught time. Scooby-Doo <laughs> Blofeld. Well, we, we thought yeah. it'd be interesting to do, like, to... to Look at a little compare series. and contrast. You know, we, don't, we don't sit around and watch Scooby Doo in our spare time all the time. So we're like, no. hey, we've done no. one from like the 70s and one from 1999. Let's have a look at one that came out last year and see if see if it's improved more or if it's the same sort of shit as it was before. And it was all right. <laughs> yeah, well, this one had a lot of buzz, of course, going in because it has canonically gay Velma in it. The woke rot. <laughs> the fucking woke left have struck again. I can't believe they made this obviously lesbian character a lesbian. I'm Not dead. even our Scooby Doo is safe. Not even our. They're coming dog. for our meddling kids. <laughs> that... With his canonically weed smoking friend. Sort of true Not to then. form, it is a bad guy. Go. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But you know, can't go too far off script. I guess a, a, a redemption arc, probably for Coco Diablo across this movie. Yeah, Coco Diablo, the sort of feels like they try and she come, becomes part of the Scooby Gang for a bit. Yes, yeah. So, Coco, I don't think many people have seen this film. I was trying to work out if this was a film a lot of angry people on the right wing information network types. We're getting really angry about. No, that yeah, was yeah, it was this show one that Mindy Carling did. No, no, that everybody really got mad that about that one. It was that <laughs> one too, but that, everyone was mad about that. Yeah, because apparently this it was, was just actually shit. So, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it was. Yeah, the Velma show aimed at adults was shit. Who'd have known? I gave it a good go. I watched a couple of episodes, and I was like, nope, not just for me, not for anybody. Rating, turns out, doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> Mm. I mean, most things that have an R rating aren't good. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, they were annoyed at this one too because Velma. Yes, because of gay Velma. Or by Velma. Or potentially or by, Velma. by Velma. Not the fact that they named the main villain off of a out of a literal Nazi. That's fine. <laughs> Wait, what? That's Coco Chanel was an actual Nazi. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hang <laughs> what's, on. This, what's this girl's name? Uh, Coco, what was it Diablo? Coco, Coco Diablo. Diablo. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. As a fashion designer named Coco, absolutely mm. named after Coco Chanel. Yeah, and yeah. don't forget yeah. that the, the other bad guy in this who also doesn't actually have anything bad happen to him is um, a prison warden who makes money off of the fact that the Scooby oh, yeah. gang have imprisoned That's, people. Yeah, that was like, kind of a weird plot nice point, fun. hey? We'll get to that. It's fuck hmm. the villain of this... The, much like, hey, in the last one we were talking about whether... Magic. Either the villain is capitalism or actual magic. Turns out the villain here capitalism. is the carceral state. Yeah, yeah. for profit prisons. <laughs> yeah, and a villainous Blofeld type named after a Nazi collaborator. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's wild. And the this, devil. This one was pretty wild for a this bit. Was, it genuinely was. Yeah, I was. Um, I mean, I, I'd seen this before, obviously. Uh, I brought it in, but on a, on like a, on a rewatch, I was surprised by how insane it is. Yeah. So, do you Cause... watch Scooby Doo a lot? Would you say have um, you seen most of the movies? Some of the movies, I've seen, like I've seen most of the movies. I would say, and uh, uh, that's probably not true. There are too many movies. Um, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen, I guess probably the ones that are broadly uh, recognised as like worth seeing, right? I've seen. That. I'm a big fan of the live action two. Oh yeah, they're incredible. They're which incredible. are great. Um, I've which is Ghost, obviously, like some of the the 2000s director video stuff I've watched. Um, 
Witches Go Zombie Island, Alien Invaders, Cyber Ghost, Monster of Mexico. And then I've been watching a few of them. No, I don't think I've seen Luckless Monster. Um, And I've been watching a few of them this October for Spooky Season. I've been getting back into a few of the newer ones. And I've been pleasantly surprised by how good some of the newer, like, you know, last sort of five years movies are. They're just good fun. And it's got a format, you know? So it's like completely low energy. You don't have to pay attention. You know basically what's going to happen. Uh, but it's just, it's just nice to watch all the beats unfold, you know? Yeah. <laughs> In a slightly different way every time. Capitalism or actual magic. Yeah, it's always fun to go, oh, is this one going to be real magic or is it just going to be capitalists? I suppose that is one way that they've managed to make it more interesting is that you know you don't actually know for sure that it is just the janitor in a mask. Yeah. Hmm. How many times are Scooby and the gang like technically really are the bad guys? Right? How many times are they like someone trying to stop a business from like destroying land and they're like we caught you. <laughs> well, yeah, if it's that case then normally like what happens isn't it that they kind of I swear things like then the mayor decides that it's going to be a park to commemorate because they've sort of brought awareness about, you know, the ghost or whatever. So. Or a giant turkey, yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. often that that happens. I think usually Scooby-Doo is pretty based in that it'll be like, it's, it'll be a businessman trying to scare away people so he can build like a big theme park or it'll be like a greedy dude trying to scare away the local so we can get to some pirate treasure or some shit, you know? Usually capitalism is the bad guy, I think, in Scooby-Doo. What crimes does Coco Diablo... So Coco Diablo... Well, Coco Diablo herself doesn't commit any crimes. Coco Diablo facilitates crimes. We discussed on the last episode whether what the villains of Scooby-Doo are doing are crimes or not. (laughs) We've discussed... Yeah, and I think we pretty unanimously agreed that, yeah, they're doing quite a lot of crimes. Not always... (laughs) Uh, it depends. Cons- if you're gonna, it, it depends on um, wi- whether or not you have one of uh, Coco Diablo's basic um, outfits, which I, well, I no, like that's just a front, goes back right? to really old stuff and be like, yeah, she even yeah. made these ones. And this is also canonically set in 2001. Um, yeah. There's a calendar in the background with 2001 on it at one point. But no, because I think it seems like her kind of like her front, right, is that she just makes regular. Uh, Halloween costumes for kids. Yeah, yeah. And then when the super you know, when when the when the when the capitalists come by, she's like, step into my giant devil head yeah. office that descends from the ceiling, and my cat that can use a computer will show you all the real shit. Yeah. Yeah, that was the most supernatural part, was the cat. The cat was yeah. great. The very ending bit with the cat really made me laugh. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. What crimes is she out here committing? I guess um, create. I think there's actually maybe. there are laws about like body armor and weapon well, arm stealing. Yeah, she's yeah, arm think, stealing, Mike. Is what stealing she's doing. That, um... Those are her crimes. Arm stealing. Yeah, didn't we just go through that? Um, a fashion uh, creator can be associated with some very bad people. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> yes. Mikey, are you sympathising with this? <laughs> no. Okay. When, well, I, when I she gets caught by of... Mystery Inc. <laughs> How when she gets caught by arrested. Mystery Inc., she is attempting to sell them a costume that is electrified and also has mind control. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I just want to work out what these people's crimes are because, again, the police in this. Show it doesn't matter. The are police great. are useless and the prison warden gets people to fill his prisons with and yeah. he's happy. And the police yeah. do fuck all. This so. is what I mean. I want to make sure that the. The why they're going to prison because the prison warden will accept literally anything <laughs> and scaring some people not a crime but I guess she was arms dealing yeah so they, they also, lock her up and they catch all with no new costumes getting out onto the market yep they run they've out got of- no mystery stuff to solve and so they're no very mysteries. sad and Fred is going maybe quite literally insane. Fred's yeah, like, Fred is definitely all... having a bit of a cry. Yeah, he's having some sort of. They're crisis. all about to have. A... They're this close to having an intervention for Fred. Yeah, Fred has a psychological break. 
Yeah, Daphne's having a crisis of faith as well because she's like, "What do I do in the gang? I'm just a here." <laughs> would you would you say that he's same jonesing as... for a mystery? Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, da- Daphne's arc in this is the same as the film. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where yeah. she's like, "I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just part of the gang. I don't actually do anything." And then it turns out she's actually quite important. Yeah. It was weird. It was oh, very weird. Nice for her. Yeah, she. Yes. I guess she only has growth the length of an episode at a time. Yep. And then she and then yeah. goes back. Every well, yeah. Well, they yeah. always, you know, they they all do always because that's the nature of it, right? Yeah. You have to like, return to square seen one. A of these, it was nice seeing one where it was like uh, I can kind of see how it's built and how it's kind of self-referential a little bit and like. Uh, just trying to build on what has come in the past before, but obviously I've not seen all 40-odd movies, so I don't know if this has happened 12 times before. I think historically Daphne, in like early Scooby-Doo stuff, she genuinely does nothing. Yeah, well that's always, it's the joke, that's the classic joke about Daphne, is that she's just there. She's just around. So they they fix it, they solve all of the crimes in the city. (laughs) Yes, and then they're all very um, sad, and there's a sad theme song that plays. Yeah, they're oh yeah, solving, the last like, mysteries they fraud, get. Uh, yeah. yeah, which I thought which was great. It's really funny when they get the last guy for tax fraud, and the police officer's like, "We don't really arrest people for that. You just do you have promise, to promise not to do it to again." Not do it again. <laughs> because capitalism is the bad. Guy. I didn't enjoy them. Like I did enjoy them trying to get a cat down from a tree as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that whole sequence is very fun. Yeah, but yeah, the that. sad Scooby Dooby Doo music uh, is is fantastic. It was very funny, like having it just yeah. be different. Because uh, this episode also just like dropped some actual songs partway through as well. Does it? Yes, yeah, it's got it's some needle a drops. Times when it's just got an actual soundtrack. But yeah, yeah, but again, that's very kind of like early like '60s Scooby Doo, you know, Scooby-Doo. where they would actually mm-hmm. just play a popular song as they were getting chased. Yeah, it's a weird one. And then, yeah, so the story, they lock so up. So Fred makes Kirby. a wish into a wishing well. Yeah, yes. which is really, that whole scene is so bizarre. So bizarre. With, they're just like driving along and Fred's like, I think I see my friend. Yeah. <laughs> he just gets out. <laughs> it's like, and they're all just like the pressed against the, the glass. <laughs> that was so, they all just watch him throw a coin into a well and he walks back and he's like, must have been someone else. <laughs> yeah, and then just drives off again. And he's got that fixed grin on his face, and everyone's so, like, if we say anything, he's going to kill one of us. It's so Oh, sinister. yeah, he is so close to driving off the road. <laughs> yeah, he's going to take us all with him. We can't <laughs> say anything. And so they go to, like, a county fair, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah they're like, we're going to drum up some business. Yeah, and he goes out, and they have a book for people to sign up to. And it's very and Shaggy sad. Shaggy and Scooby want to, It's Halloween, and Shaggy and Scooby are like, "We want to go trick They desperately want the, the driving force behind this whole movie is that Shaggy and Scooby desperately want to go trick or treating. Well, mm. it's because they go trick or treating, and then they find a house made out of entirely made out of candy and eat it. That's isn't that just a dream? That, That's yeah. a dream sequence. I'm pretty dream? sure. Yeah, that was a dream sequence. <laughs> I saw it from like a week. Ago. That was another weird inflatable <laughs> sex fetish. Yeah, that's true. Uh, dream. I saw this. I watched this film like a week ago. Peek behind the curtain. We were meant to record this a week ago. I had time to rewatch this film. I didn't. <laughs> Why would you? I you already did it one, last week. Two notes. two notes. So <laughs> I I can't remember half of this film. Yeah, it's sort of fresher in my mind because I watched this one yesterday. Not yeah. rewatched. I was ill last week. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm the reason that Mikey is vague. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bigger than normal, well. which is impressive. So yeah, yeah, they're at they're at the fair, and it's it's all very sad. And Fred is just like relentlessly chirpy, and everyone's kind of walking on eggshells around him in case he goes yeah, spare. Yeah, you know, becomes an axe murderer. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and Shaggy and Scooby are like, "I'm out of here." Um, in case he goes off on one, we're gonna go get some popcorn or whatever. Uh, and they find a ghost, and they're like. Well, they're apple bobbing, and then they go. That's turns right. Up. They're apple bobbing, and, and then it's the ghosts like, turn up. Yeah, well, and they run bobbing, away. They're just eating the apples. Yeah, they haven't got <laughs> the point of apple bobbing. <laughs> they're just hungry. And 
yeah, and they get away from him and they go, we cannot tell Fred about this because if we do, we'll never get to go trick or treating. I did enjoy that. Like that as as a sort of joke was very funny. Yeah. The sort of yeah. bad subterfuge. But yeah. they crack, uh, Scooby's cracks like, Immediately cracks, away. yeah. yeah. Um, and, but Fred thinks that they're just trying to make him feel better until the ghost shows up and fireballs their booth. Yeah, again, one crime, fireballs. And Fred is just so fucking excited because he's like, hell yeah. And he's so Fred. happy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I um, love how. Do the ghosts how... at this point look like them, or does that happen later? Yeah, yeah, no. That's the ghost later. looks like Fred. He looks like a Victorian mm-hmm. orphan version of Fred, and he says, oh, so "I'm Fred here for time. you." Yeah, we just yeah. see Fred at the time. I think we see the rest when they go to the library, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's after this that they go to the prison because they're like, "We need to find Coco Diablo and see if she knows what's going on." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're like, "We should go and see." Yeah, they kind of catch me if you can, huh? Mm. But like the end of yeah. it, yeah. And the prison warden's like, "I love you guys." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, we yeah. should." Uh, you're helping me keep my prison in business. Yeah, yeah. And he keeps trying uh, to show them all of this tech that he's invented, which will come up later on. And they're like, "We haven't got time for this bullshit. Take us to the well, hot crime lady." He does something real dark where he's like. Uh, opens all the cells up, and then when they try and get out, they get shocked. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Invisible a false field. He's That's kind of a psycho, false. but I That's think everybody's false. kind of psychotic in this. I love how like yeah. just completely off the chain Fred is in this. I mean, everyone that yeah. makes money out of owning a prison is a fucking psycho. So, well, certainly, but he is more like overtly, you know. Yeah, he's enjoying yeah. himself think, too much. Yeah, electric electrifying. A f- invisible force field and tricking your prisoners into trying to escape. It's that's pretty... a war crime, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. A, pretty that's sure that's crime. against the G. Yeah, I, I think prisoners. it isn't it. Is that, isn't it just a crime crime? Yeah, this is a regular well, I think it's also a crime crime, but I think it might also be a war crime. Yeah, I think the it problem might be is a, like... that they own the prison, so they can't go to prison. <laughs> Geneva <laughs> Oh, I guess I'll take myself to prison. Yes. Oh no. oh no! I'm. Oh no! I'm. I'm in the prison that I own. Oh, what a oh. shame. <laughs> I've left oh, I guess only the luxury field. cells are left. Yeah. That's what uh, I'd do if I had to take myself to prison. Put myself in the penthouse. Yeah. I don't think prisoners have a penitentiary. <laughs> 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 Isn't that what pent is short for? Yes. So they go and so Coco. they go to see Coco Diablo, who's like, yeah, sure, I'll help you. Give me all of your information. And they were like, we haven't no, got any right. information. Oh. Van was like, oh my God, I need her. Well, yeah, because she's like Coco Diablo's like got rich by writing a book and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Coco Diablo like she got... humiliates them, right? She doms them. Yeah. She's like, you idiots, you cucks, you yeah. stupid bitches. I could have solved this case in four seconds, and you fucked it up royally. Yeah, get on your knees. And Velma's <laughs> like, yes, please. Yes, mummy. <laughs> yeah, but they say so, yeah. They go with Coco uh, Diablo to. Investigate. This is where my memory of the film kind of bleeds. So they her. go back to the fair to investigate, and she's like, they're like, oh, is that the smell of kettle corn? Um, and Shaggy and Scooby have gone to get some popcorn. Yep. And then she's like, no, it's the smell of some sort of petroleum after yes. thingy. Yeah, and then they find the guest book, and it has the word Nefario written in it. Yeah. Because of the fireballs, the mystery machine is just also absolutely fucked as well. That's, again, a really funny bit where Fred refuses to stop using the absolutely (laughs) cooked mystery machine. (laughs) It's just barely any of it left. Yeah, I think it's a good good, um, visual example of how small of a thread is holding Fred together. (laughs) Yes. Like, his his emotional state mirrors the mystery machine. Again, it's psycho shit, yeah. It's very fun. He's struggling. He's yeah. not having a good time. He, he needs to go to a mechanic slash inpatient. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> he needs a therapist. <laughs> but instead, he finds a spooky version of Mystery Inc. in a book. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they go to the library, and um, Coco is all like, Why the fuck are we at a library, you nerds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they, they learn about this group, and they're like, Oh, we've. We've created too much good, and now this force has come to balance it out with evil because we've solved all the crimes and it's too good. And then 
they get chased to Boring Blitz, and then the, they end up getting oh, yeah. ghost because they're in a library, and the lady in the library just keeps telling them to shut up. Yes. Oh, that bit was so good. And then they were in the kids section, mm. and they're all sitting on the little chairs. Yeah, oh. perfect, perfect slapstick cartoon stuff. I loved Freddy. Was it Freddy running away? And he goes, oh, God, I can't, I can't catch my breath. And then he just keeps running. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. like, just kidding. Just kidding. I can keep doing this. Yeah, because I have got you. And he's like, just kidding. He, and he's doing it well, to nobody. He comes alive now that there's like proper ghost and a proper mystery. He's yeah, straight yeah, back he's in his element. Finally, he's feeling things again. He's rock hard. Yeah, he doesn't want to mystery. burn things anymore. <laughs> yeah, he is full master. He stopped time. hearing the voices and he can achieve erection again. <laughs> yeah, when the, when the mystery is occurring, he stops hearing the voices. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so that's I cool. Um, stopping and going, oh no, <laughs> oh no, I'm fine. Ah. Just teasing the ghost. Yeah, good. And so yeah, but they make an escape and they almost don't because Shaggy, his costume is too he's big still, to fit out the window. They're still in their trick or treat. They're still in the pumpkin. Oh, there's a really on the pumpkin good because all their other costumes yeah. were too scary. <laughs> really <laughs> funny bit where they keep <laughs> coming back and scaring each other in various different <laughs> Halloween costumes. Just a perfect, another perfect bit. And yeah, so Shaggy gets stuck in the window and they're like, leave the costume. And he's like, I can't, otherwise I can't go trick-or-treating. You don't understand. This is all I've got. <laughs> and then they end up going to Trevor Glooms, who is a guy that used to work for Coco. Yes, so... It was designed yeah, vampire things. He we missed this at the moment. beginning. Yeah. This kind of like real fishy looking bloke who, you know, this kind of like very classic goth with a top hat. And purple all over. Coco Diablo's underling, I guess. Like was constantly, like Yeah, I guess so. Kind of like harassed and like abused assistant. by Coco. It's her assistant. That's the word for it. <laughs> he, he, he brings her like a, a, a costume and she throws it into an alligator pit. Right? Because it's, it's, it's another vampire. Yeah. <laughs> and it's she devil wears Prada's him. And he cries a lot. I... I'd watch The Devil Wears Prada with Coco, Diablo, and that guy. <laughs> right? <That'd laughs> and a incredible. crocodile pit. And a crocodile yeah. pit. Um, and so she says, well, you know, cloaks, top hats, I know who did this. It was, it's my dipshit, dumb shit apprentice, assistant. Let's go see him. Yeah. Oh, and by so way, they do. Uh, another, another crime we can add to Coco, Diablo. Uh, harboring illegal exotic pets. Hmm. She has crocodiles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those might be illegal in the state of Florida. And yeah, she might have a permit for those. <laughs> oh, another, I mean, OSHA violation. She doesn't have any, like, lights around the moving parts of... Yeah, there's no there's railing, railing around the crocodile pit. So, yeah, they go to see Trevor, and he cries and snivels, and Coco's mean to him, and Velma looks on and goes, yes, please. And it yeah. turns out oh, yeah, that it's... They, they work out he's innocent because they're like, let's look at the CCTV of when it happens, <laughs> see if he's here. And then they're like, zoom and enhance, zoom and enhance, zoom and enhance, and then it's just... It's just hours of him sitting yeah, alone. It's hours yeah. of him yeah. sitting there with no customers. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just tears rolling. <laughs> uh, Again, very funny stuff. Yeah. Um, but then but he says... Tears. Yes, well, and he says, I've had you know, the biggest order of, of my life, right? You think that I'm a failure, but I'm not. I just got, like, a huge order of Victorian vampire clothes that I had to deliver to the prison. And yeah. they're like, the prison? And they look around and Coco's gone. And they're like, ah, fuck. We're idiots. <laughs> it's been yeah. Coco all along. She's been playing us for fools. <laughs> and so Trevor helps them do up the mystery machine and turn it yes. into some sort of insane gothmobile. Turns it into a gothmobile with a top hat. <laughs> Every time someone tries to do something, he puts a bat on, and half of the time it's Fred <laughs> looking in the mirror at himself. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't the doesn't the uh, wing mirror say if you can see yourself in this if you can see yourself in this mirror, it's probably Fred. It yeah, says objects in the in mirror, mirror maybe Fred Jones. Fred yeah. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a fantastic, that fantastic really little me. gag. Good, good, uh, good bits. Yeah, yeah. And, then and again, they had not trick or when they drive to the um, when they drive to the 
factory. It has visitor parking, staff parking, and then meddler parking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just sit there. Uh, and then the spooky version of, of them are, are playing Go Fish. Um, yes, they're playing, yeah, they're playing Go Fish. And then they start scaring around, them. But Shaggy and Scooby get somewhat stuck in a vending machine, so they start hitting the vending machine. Yeah, and then Shaggy gets inside the vending machine. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, long story short, they start getting chased around by the ghosts again, and eventually they, they lure the ghosts into the alligator pit, right? Yeah. Which, if they thought that they were real people, again, that's yeah. them just doing four murders. That's murder, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they were hoping that they'd take the costumes off and then they could rescue them from the alligator pit. Maybe, maybe, um, but... <laughs> but I don't know about all that. But it doesn't matter, because it turns out that they're robots. They're machines. Which begs the question, why were they playing Go Fish before the mystery <laughs> gang turned up? I, I guess mean... AIs are a bit like huskies, where you kind of have to keep them mentally stimulated or they get bored and destructive. Well, if we know, it, so it's revealed that it's the yeah, the big um, reveal is the the I've forgotten what they're called the warden the warden yeah the warden, yeah, the warden, the warden, warden has the taken the cat hostage the cat that can use a computer yeah um, yeah because the girl because Coco comes out and is like it was and me confesses, it was all exactly. me I confess and they're like that doesn't really seem That's like suspicious yeah. I mean, it um, turns out that the warden did it because he heard Fred wish for a mystery and he's such a big fan that he was like, I'll give them a good mystery. Yeah, he just wanted Fred Jones to be happy. He I, I, I was assuming to... that it would be because he uh, needed more prisoners to make more money, um, but it didn't go down. Also, I, yes. I think I think it was, I, that was a big part of it. Yeah. I think that was the original line and then they changed it later. To be like, <laughs> we can't be that obvious. Hmm. They're like, that's too close to, like, real uh, yeah. social commentary. <laughs> but then when the warden's fucking about, he accidentally lets all the prisoners go by pressing a button on his... Uh, yeah. Yes. Like, weird tech. Uh, and... And I I thought it would end there. I thought it'd yeah. be like, and all the prisoners are out and... Freddy and... And now Fred's happy because... Anymore. And now yeah. they're all Everybody else is fucked, but Fred... To catch. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's like a weird montage of them catching. Well, they all put on Coco. They all put on the costumes, right? They all put on yeah. Coco Diablo's costume, so they're all wearing like the Black Knight Ghost and the Ten Thousand Volt mm. Ghost and Captain Cutler's Ghost costumes, and they yeah, all go out and they the catch all of those they're people. Stealing the Halloween candy from the kids. Yeah, which is what prisoners would do after they'd broken out of a max security prison. Oh yeah, the first thing you do is very, very minor petty crime. Yeah, I against think if children. I had been in prison for twenty odd years for dressing up as a ghost and scaring people, and I escaped. The first thing I would do is get a twirl. So <laughs> <laughs> the lawyers in. But who's handing out twirls on Halloween, Dan? No one's giving out a full size twirl on Halloween. Uh, no, you have to go to you have to rob a corner shop for that. <laughs> that you get or a twirl it's just mini. The little ones from the, the heroes. <laughs> Yeah, you get a 12 mini from like the packets that you get before Halloween, which is mm. just a a collection of small joggler bars. Yeah. And I just don't think anyone's given out twirls on Halloween. It's a, it's a sad reality that when I, I think twirls are... After 20 years, I'll be disappointed that nobody's given yeah, out twirls on Because Halloween. your only wish is for a shit-tier chocolate bar. <laughs> oh, so your problem is that they're, they're too low ground. Nobody's given them out... Because they're too. I shit. think if you, I think yeah, I think if a kid was given a twirl at a house on Halloween, that house is getting egged. Really, yeah. twirls are tw pretty good. Twirls are twirls are like a flake, but contained, so they're not so fucking messy, <laughs> and you don't drop it all. <laughs> I'm a big fan of twirls, actually. <laughs> No, I've never is just heard a... anyone go so hard into a flake before. Oh yeah, flakes suck. <laughs> Why did the flake get a dry quite, button? We, well, flakes are okay if they're on an ice cream, but if you're just like, oh, I've fun. Oh, you know what, you Dan? A flake and half it crumbles on the floor. You get a bit no. pissed off. Dan, and then I your grandma up. tells you off because you sat on the good yeah, sofa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, look, I'm with you. I fucked up. I thought you meant a curly whirly. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. No, curly whirlies are all right. I mean, but... Also not bad, but I'd mm. rather have a twirl. 
I'd rather have a twirl because a curly whirly probably rip my fucking teeth out. At this point. Yeah, <laughs> I I had that once. I ate a curly whirly and it pulled a tooth out. <laughs> oh no! Well, young. especially for it kids like... as well. His teeth yeah. are well. not held in well at, at the best of times. Teeth be gone. I I still think flakes are all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've got nothing good. against a flake. I, a I used to absolutely love a, a ca- um, galaxy ripple. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They're a marvel of engineering flakes, though. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's why you get a twirl and then it's got a little coat on. And it's got a little jacket. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or you get like the bags of twirl bites and then you um, eat them all in the cinema before the film starts. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So we all just sat here thinking about chocolate. Guy, yeah. Right. Rate, so rate your ten, they all it's, go, it's twenty yeah. to ten at night, and now I'm like, I really want a twelve. <laughs> Guys, rate your top ten chocolate. What's your top chocolate bar to get at Halloween? Oh. This is coming out on Halloween. Best yeah. thing to get uh, in trick or treating. I mean, um, I love a cream egg, but you don't get them. At I've Halloween. literally it's no, but egg. you do. You get the green yeah, cream get the eggs. Cream egg. The but Scream the Eggs. Ones. Full Scream size Scream Egg, egg is the top tier one to get. No, they had to be green. Damn, we've been through why they're green and not red. Yes, I know, but I think it'd be cooler if they had a face carved into them and it was red inside. Because it would be horrifying to watch a child eat. <laughs> it would. And also, if you hide the razor blades in there like you do for all Halloween candy, yeah. then you Obviously. can't tell the child's bleeding from the mouth. <laughs> yeah. And I like the determination of a child is like, despite the razor blades, they're still going at the still cream Still chomping away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're only around two <laughs> times a year. Yeah, you don't get them all the time. You've got to have the cream egg. <laughs> I'll tell mum about the razor blades after I've finished. You'll finish the cream egg. <laughs> um, mine, <laughs> uh, I honest... Pleading profusely. <laughs> <laughs> then you call the police. <laughs> As a vegan... Don't really get oh. much choice when it comes to that. Yeah. My favourite Halloween chocolate is kale. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, there's a company that has recently started doing like really good dupes of like um, Mars bars and Snickers bars. So yeah, like one of them would be pretty amazing. Do you think that houses just in today's Mars bar, but it's in quotation marks? <laughs> Do you think that in today's <laughs> woke times, <laughs> people are you know keeping like vegan options for their uh, in the, for their candy for their Halloween candies? Well, sometimes you just can buy case. like free from you can buy like little free from well uh, a lot of things. And... A lot of like gummy candies and stuff are vegan these days. You don't necessarily mm-hmm. need Some to are. get the gelatin ones. You know, you can um, pretty easily find... A lot of the old find... ones were as well. Um, weirdly, uh, the place I work had a conference that I didn't go to, but they, for some reason, I don't know why, because this was an adult conference for adults um, about, like, health research and various other things. Massive tub of sweets was bought for it. Nice. So that everyone could have some sweeties. But, like, old school stuff, so, like, refreshers and drumsticks and... Like the the little lollies that look like a have sort of like a straw look like a strawberry with the wrapper on. Oh yeah, talk about take your teeth out by the way. Yeah, uh, and like Malwams and stuff like that. <laughs> Love yeah. a Malwam. That's a that's a good Love Halloween candy. Malwams I think. Yeah, Malwams. You start and then you don't stop though. That's the problem. Yeah. So the Mal, but they they also had these one like Swizzler, uh, which is like the the brand that do those sort of old school sweets. They also have, like, they had these really old school sounding ones, which was like a sticky toffee pudding Malwan bar and a oh, yes. pie Malwan bar. And both of those were vegan and, like, actually labelled as vegan. And I was just what? like, get in. They sound pretty so good. I was like, I can take, I can take part in Halloween. I'm just going to ask you guys, do you guys get Halloween as, what, what do you call them? Kids, I guess? Trick or treaters. Children. Trick or treaters. I don't think I've ever had, had a trick or treater. Halloweeners. <laughs> Halloweeners. Uh, do you get them where you live? Because we, we I live in a, and I live in a block of flats. There's no kids around, so we don't we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, no, I've never got trick or treaters at the back of the building. So. That's determined, yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's why I'm just doing a Halloween party instead and be like, please come round and eat the chocolates. <laughs> I think I yeah we get them. Um, we haven't for the past couple of years, but it's also been like a bad time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, we get them all the time. You see, go out and get a twirl and a free sample of COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you come back with two things. I'm <laughs> just giving out lateral flows instead of Mars bars. 
<laughs> to be fair, it is the best time to wear a mask. <laughs> exactly. So if a bloke turned up at your house with a Great Dane and they were both dressed yeah. as pumpkins, would you give them some sweets? Um, yeah, because I, I think they, otherwise they'd too. murder me. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't give them any chocolate. I'd make sure I didn't give them any chocolate because it looks like that guy's going to give it to the dog. <laughs> I like the, the idea that you've got three baskets by your door of like, okay, normal sweets, vegan slash gluten-free, and then Scooby snacks. Scooby-Doo. Oh, no. Because yeah. yeah. everybody knows in Coolsville, everyone's like, fucking Shaggy's going to be around at some point. And I was like... Yeah. But he's 37, dear. I know he's 37. <laughs> if we don't give him to us, he'll do stuff. Like yeah. He know has what said this is all he'll live for. It I don't know what he's going to do, of but it's going to be bad. So we need some fucking dog chocolates. Go out and get them. Just get that he doesn't care. But we can't give them actual chocolates because of the dog. And if the dog dies, fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good God. I wouldn't want to be within 50 miles of Coolsville. No. Oh, I remember when my uh, speaking of treats for dogs um, I had to take my mum's dog to the vet once because um, she'd, she'd been, I think it was her she'd been spayed re- quite recently and uh, she'd had a little reaction to one of the stitches mm. um, which was basically, obviously the worst thing that had ever happened to her and like, she had to be basically carried and she made this huge fuss in the way that only like cockapoo puppies can yeah. You think the world was ending? She was like cuddling me, shaking, crying, and then at the end, after I tortured her for twenty minutes, where they prodded and poked her and said, "I think literally like put some pseudocrem on it." They were like, "Would you like to give her an advent calendar?" And they had dog advent calendars, calendars, wow. and I was just like, after I'd put her through all that, and I was like, "For fuck's sake, okay, fine." I got to buy the dog. And it was like carob, calendar. carob chocolate, mm. and she fucking we... hated it. <laughs> yeah, dogs don't like that shit. Uh, we had a calendar, like a refillable calendar for Christmas when I was younger. Like you'd put chocolates in it yourself. Mm. It was just like a material one. Uh, one year we decided to put dog treats in it for the dogs. And then oh. we came down one morning and the dog had pulled it down. <laughs> and yeah, I don't think dogs treats. have the concept um, of Advent. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we didn't think. Uh, we thought it would have been too high up. It wasn't for one of them. He was very tall. Um, so from then on, we kept the admin calendar up, but we didn't put any treat in it. Yeah, I think that's sensible. <laughs> but we just remembered every day. And gave Otherwise, you're not really treat. giving them an advent calendar. You're just giving them a challenge. Yeah, he pulled it down and was just eating it. <laughs> it was really funny. So it's down. Like the prisoners. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because I thought it was going to end there. Also, small Snickers bar, best Halloween. Oh yeah, little Snickers um, are always good. Mm. Little Snickers. But it doesn't so end there. They the catch all of the, Snickers. or they're not catching all of the criminals. They go, they they're catching the criminals, and Fred's like, "This is the best thing ever. I'll never die." And then Fred. that's sort of how the film. <laughs> I begins. want to live again. <laughs> Fred ejaculates. Yeah. He yeah. throws his antidepressants achieves, into the river. Fred achieves orgasm. <laughs> um, and that's how the movie ends. Yeah, yeah. he's... Uh, well, it ends with no. him... They catch well, all the well, criminals and they <laughs> tie them all the up. 10,000 volt ghost and helps <sighs> them capture everyone as well. Yes. Yeah. And they tie them all up in a big circle and yeah. they've got all of the candy and Shaggy and Scooby-Doo are about to eat the candy and Coco Diablo's like... Don't eat that candy. That belongs to the children of Coolsville. And Shaggy's like, I will murder you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has that, how fucking dare you. Yeah. <laughs> the look of rage in his eyes. Um, but yeah. luckily, the, the, the goth underling has been wandering around. People have just been giving him candy. Yeah. Uh, yeah so Shaggy and Scooby get to eat... Yeah, so that Shaggy and Scooby get to eat that instead. And yeah. that's... How the movie ends? Well, not yeah. quite. Well, not quite. Almost. That I do absolutely love that. So the, there's a point where, um, like, because they've kind of teamed up with Coco to to be on the same team, and Scooby just looks at the cat and he's like friends, and the cat just like stands up and goes, "No, no." <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then Fred's like, "Daphne, you're the leader of the gang. It's fine. Don't worry." And then Fred just starts throwing wads of cash into a wishing well. Into like, the wishing well. More. That's right. I want more. <laughs> and then there's a, like a big eye in the well. 
Yeah, at the end it zooms in on the art, like the this giant eye opens up in the hmm. well, like some sort of kraken. Yeah. <laughs> I then, did I, you stay I for the post credit scene? I did. Yeah, right, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you lot are joking because no, I no, can't this, remember. This legit. I feel like I feel like you guys are lying no, to me because then yeah, he he the... properly like cash money starts um, splashing cash Slinging into the wishing well and this just, eye yeah. and it like does that zoom and like the eye he's... opens. Genuinely yeah, the eye at the bottom of the well open, and and he's just throwing that eye's getting paper cuts. He's chucking Benjamins down there. He's yeah. chucking Hundos. <laughs> Down this well as everybody looks on and laughs at this man having a mental breakdown. I fully don't believe you. <laughs> like, I feel like you are lying. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, if you think that's weird, then after the credits, it shows the, uh, so the vending machine where the treats were stuck in that, um, yes. that Jackie was trying to get, and they just fall out. <laughs> and that's no, the last bit of that, chocolate that treats Scooby Doo. Yeah. I genuinely don't believe you. It was a really <laughs> baffling ending, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, that last that last little bit. Or, to be honest, the whole everything that happened after they find out that it's the warden. Mm. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. surreal. It's yeah. Very mad. Very much a, oh shit, we wrote, we wrote a um, one hour and ten, or eight, five to ten minute film. Yeah, and we, we need to stick minutes, in another, tw- yeah, we need another 15 minutes. We promised 90 minutes and... Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess how many um, snack-sized candy bars <laughs> would you give this out of 10? Look, the bar for Scooby-Doo we have established is low. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's Brew Brothers low. And I really enjoyed the first, yeah, 80 minutes, I think, mm. of this yeah. film. And then it kind of, the last bit was just a bit weird. And it made up for it at the end because it was, just went totally batshit. But it was, <laughs> the, the weird roundup of all the criminals just was unnecessary. Um, didn't really do anything for me, but I this film is also really, really nicely animated. There were definitely oh, yeah. bits of like, um, oh yeah, studio uh, illumination studio kind of in um, kind of vibes yeah. to it. Yeah, all the backgrounds um, that look like old Scooby Doo things. Yeah. They, like the only weird thing is, yeah, they have that weird style where they don't have proper eyes or anything, and yeah, it's like it's trying dot, to be stylized eyes. to how they used to be, but it's like. Like, the characters were the bit that I liked the least, I'd say. Like, in terms of design. Yeah. Yeah, but it's nice to... I mean, it, it's so much better than the Be Cool Scooby-Doo from more recent years. Yeah, yeah. Which I really hate. But yeah, the lack of whites in the eyes was kind of strange. But I got used to it. That's still that's still fine. But I, I absolutely love the way they actually... Because it's not, you know, hand-drawn animation... They interact with the background more, yeah. So that yeah. was fun, and like more was going on, and like it sort of had a bit of it was a bit of a best of both kind of thing where it had the old school style, but with all the new tech. So I think for that reason, I would give this one seven scary well krakens. Yep. Out of ten, like I this one, I I've <laughs> yeah, they've got better at it over the last twenty years. Yeah. I'd say. I'd say that it's it's improved. Yeah, I I think I'd be about the same. I think I I think I'd go with the seven potential war crimes committed by um Coco uh, not Chanel. Coco not Chanel. I think it's good. It was a good film. It was entertaining. It was surprisingly more in depth written. Uh, actually, no seven. Uh, Fred psychological breakdowns. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was really weird they put that in, and it, the 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 vibe coin was scene, so yeah. So sh- the coin scene was so sinister. Yeah, yeah. And the tone shift, whatever Fred started talking, they felt was... more like people, but they felt like people having serious mental health crises. Yeah, so it that it like... was like these characters are fleshed out, but not in the way in the that I thought way. a kids film would do. Yeah, they they they're like actual people having the worst time of their life. Um, and it was horrifying, and I loved it. I loved weirdly sinister Fred. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd give this a seven as well. I'm going to give it a seven. Escaped criminals under a van in London. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it it was enjoyable. I like how yeah, it kind of like called back to some of the older Scooby Doo things as well, and like just like it it had good jokes in it as well, like a, a, a nice little Scooby Doo time. I agree. I think yeah, it's a, it was a, it was a fun movie. Um, 
I think I had as good a time with it as I had with The Witch's Ghost. Oh, right. I, yeah, I love just so many of the little bits in it I appreciated, you know, just the little, like, visual gags and little sort of moments of just taking the time to do a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was, I thought this film was funnier than The Witch's Ghost. Yes. Yeah, I think so. And more, this you film, know, gone. This film felt more, this film felt more intentional. Yeah. Uh, like it was like they went out to write a film, whereas the witches goes kind of felt like they went, "Oh, we need a film." <laughs> oh, we just take an episode. Uh, yeah, and I can, I do, I like the art style of it. Um, I thought it fit well with kind of like the slapstick style of like of the, of the writing. Um, yeah, it was a good movie. Good movie. Um, I think I will give it as I gave to the witches' ghost seven life sentences for minor drug offences out of ten. <laughs> oh yeah, she's fully like um what's it called when you're not in prison anymore? Liberated. Oh, she's oh, yeah. 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 No, she like... goes back to prison at the end. Does she? Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's why yeah, and then that's why she can't be with Velma. And they do the sort of oh under different and they circumstances. Give, and the new warden the new warden is the guy who was doing financial crimes earlier in the <laughs> earlier in the movie. Yeah. Oh shit. What a beautiful yeah. commentary. <laughs> uh, like, very surprising from a Scooby-Doo cartoon. <laughs> Makes you think. Yeah. Makes you think. <laughs> well, before we think too much, I've been Dan. I've been Michael. And I've been Helena. Uh, and I've been Matt, and you can find me at Matt's Music House or Dwayne The Rock Johnson on the internet. Um, and check out my podcast that I do with Mac. Uh, which is called What the Flick, and we uh, write the plots of movies we haven't seen based on the poster to that movie, is what we say, whereas in reality we look at the poster for two seconds and then do our own thing. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We always say that we're going to um, see if movies we liked as kids hold up, and then we do not that. <laughs> <laughs> we just talk it's good about to have a podcast premise right. and then immediately... Yeah. Reduce it to meaninglessness. Yeah, so yeah. bloody do that if you like, you <laughs> fools. I'm being well, hostile to your audience this time before you can do it. <laughs> everyone is. We're always hostile. It. We're hostile to literally everyone. Yeah. We're hostile to each other, we're hostile to the audience, and we're hostile to the guests. <laughs> <laughs> In that order. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, well, you can find this podcast on social media at Hilton Pod. That's at H I L T M Pod. Uh, we're on Discord if you want to come and tell us. Do, did you enjoy the new Trick or Treat Scooby Doo? Or, you know, did you find it ridiculous that, that Velma is in love with a woman? Cause it's yeah, it would be interesting to I'm find so out how much of your audience is homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm I'm not. just going to say, nothing says pirate me more than an animated Scooby-Doo movie that you can only buy for 10 quid. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. no option to rent this film at the moment. So, yeah, I uh, I now own Scooby-Doo and the Trick or Treat. That's not the title. Trick or, Trick or Treat, so, Scooby-Doo. Okay. <laughs> so do we all. Uh, we so... all spent 10 bucks on it. Definitely. Yes. yes. Each. In that case, uh, please sign up to our Patreon so we can reimburse Helena a tenner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless we're doing something else for Patreon this, like for this bonus episode too. We are. Which Nazi are we going to animate? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not, we are going to be inspired. We're going to make an animation inspired by a Nazi. We're going to no. set up a prison and fill it with people. Yes. Hugo awesome. Boss wasn't he a Nazi? Or oh, I got that wrong. He he did yeah, the he uniforms the Nazi, for the Nazis. Yeah. 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 Um, Coco Chanel just helped them escape the country when the war ended. Ah. Yeah, we could also do uh, Adidas or Puma, either of those brands. Yeah, a shocking amount. Or we could do Coke and sell Fanta because that's Indeed. how Fanta came about. Mm-hmm. It was so they could sell it to the Nazis. Huh. It's, yeah, Fun well, game anyway. to play. I prefer kids, talking yeah. about Scooby Doo. to Patreon. just Wikipedia any of your favourite brands and find out how they were founded by or collaborated with the Nazis. Because <laughs> yeah. it's all of them, I promise you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the Patreon. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna start making outfits for criminals. <laughs> Fuck it. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Well, you saw the beautiful jumper I made for my walrus earlier. Yeah, we're going to start making costumes. Toy walrus. I feel like I should clarify. We have 
<laughs> we can't Minimal. afford an alligator pit. We definitely can't afford it. Mike's a got some <laughs> fierce ideas for the Proud Boys. We've got. They're going to look some... fly as hell. <laughs> Minimal costuming skills, though. Hey, I did cosplay as a teenager, so speak for yourself. Minimal. I've seen it. Minimal <laughs> costuming yeah. skill. Who do you think designed that cool buffalo hat for that guy? <laughs> <in> the... <laughs> uh, my cosplays were not good. Mm. Anyway, bad dreams, viewers. Bad dreams. dreams. 